Hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide and we are on May 19th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to what May long weekend coming up here for everybody. And looking at space weather for today, the last 48 hours, still not much to talk about except for the events that were shown in yesterday's video. Not much has changed. That sunspot is still alive. Not really sure if it's got anything left in it. Looking at outgoing images here. As well, an active outgoing sunspot. Another close look here. At the most activity that we've seen over the past week is from this sunspot. This is the last 48 hours of imagery. We did have an earth facing coronal hole and we are due, if not going through it a little bit right now. But right here on the cresting northwestern limb of the sun, three interesting elements here, developing coronal hole, plasma filament and the sunspot. So three very interesting elements on the sun right beside each other, a northwestern incoming limb. Looking here at Iswa, you can see there is quite a bit of space weather heading our way. We're the yellow and all of that green is the space weather. Looking at real-time solar wind, we are sitting at about 350, 370 kilometers per second, but literally it's pretty jagged and erratic. Other than dramatic, but the temperatures, the temperatures are really starting to increase here. And we'll watch for the density to start increasing and then we'll see the solar winds come in. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty intense coronal hole. Looking at our Schumann resonance for today, as we are at an amplitude power of 59, still a buzzin' and a quality of 11.7. Looking at the last 24 hours for earthquakes, eerily quiet considering the 6.7 yesterday, East Chile, East Chile rise. Looking here across the North American plate, 3.0 there, Lincoln, Montana. Interesting, pretty close to the Canadian border. As well, 3.4 here reported BC, Mexico border. That's uh, Salton Sea as well, 2.8. And at 2.5 there, Oroville, California. Interesting spot there, though, looking at the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Let's go to USGS. And you can see all across California, it's kind of split. And there's a bunch of earthquakes all up the coastline. And then there's an area that isn't. And then we have, of course, Lake Tahoe, which is now, for some reason, active showing a lot of earthquakes in the lake as well earthquakes close to mono lake earthquakes all around mammoth mountains and then the california coastline of course all along the geysers and san andreas fault san bernardino fault and then right in the center of it all here a little two point what, what was it 2.3 2.3 2.1 earthquake 2.5, sorry, at 10 kilometer depth in Oroville, California. No major earthquakes to talk about through Canada. Quiet through Alaska. 4.1 minor earthquake there, Russia, 
Minor earthquake here, 4.2 Japan. 4.9 here, east of the volcano islands. So maybe some more underwater volcanoes through Japan. 3.9 there reported to Taiwan. 4.6 here reported to China. And yesterday, I guess there were some buildings swaying in downtown China. Another 4.5 here reported after the 5.3 in Nepal. As well, 4.6 here, Afghanistan reported today. 4.5 here in Turkey, 10 kilometer depth. Definitely a shaker that couldn't be felt and reported there in Turkey. And then we get to Central America, where through Puerto Rico, seen minor earthquakes today, largest being a 3.1 at a 15 kilometer depth. And then El Salvador, 4.3 there. And then South America, we get to South America where yesterday we had the 6.7 in the East Pacific rise. Today we had a 5.1 in the same region. And then our largest and deepest earthquake of the day, 5.1 here in Colonia Dora, Argentina, 598 kilometer depth, 5.1. And as well, a 193 kilometer depth there, 4.1. San Antonio de los Cobros, which is an area that I've talked about before in a few videos. And as well, Peru ringing off. So yes, very active South American plate, but I still don't think it's enough, everybody. Looking at a 4.9 here, south of Africa, still a lot of stress coming from the south. 5.5 here, the southeast Indian Ridge at a 10 kilometer depth. And as well, a deep earthquake here, the Fiji region. Fiji Islands, 4.4. This is just recent, 545 kilometer depth. So watch for a larger, shallower earthquake to follow here real soon. Solomon Islands, 4.5. Timor Leste, 4.3. And there's an update the last 24 hours for earthquakes around the world. And I would consider it still pretty quiet. Looking at 230 earthquakes the last 24 hours, and largest through Hawaii being a 3.2. Having a look here, the last seven days for earthquakes. And yeah, a lot of recent activity through South America has been expected. The unexpected Indian Ocean and African plate movement over the last little while. You got to wonder what's next. And I still believe that through Central America, not enough pressure has been released yet. Either watch for large volcanic eruptions, even larger than what we've seen, or a larger earthquake. And as well, pretty quiet through Alaska, watching for an uptick as a big low heads into the area yet again. And that's the last seven days for earthquakes. Much love to everybody, and again, thank you for subscribing, hitting that notification bell so you don't miss an update. Having a look here, Meteor Earth giving you a five-day forecast. And yeah, things have changed a little bit here throughout North America, especially with developing surface lows through Colorado and as well Alberta Clippers and stuff like that. So we're going to start out here, home base Calgary, Alberta. As Yeah, we had uh, some ice pellets today and we're most likely going to see some snow tonight through the foothills and very cold temperatures across northern Alberta, Saskatchewan. A lot of my friends on Facebook and other social media posting some wild pictures of snow and videos. It's May 19th. That's right, May long, and we have snow. It's not rare, but we are looking at some interesting developing jet streams across Canada right now. And watch for a big low develop here through Alberta in the late week coming out of Utah and as well the Alberta Clipper heading eastward watch for it to join forces with the system coming out of the states and a wild weather heading towards the Atlantic provinces and then watch through central United States and as well the plains heading northward as those surface lows head north and around the very strong high pressure ridge big low pressure system here in the Atlantic ramping up getting ready to go to the coastline but then watch it get thwarted 
by the Alberta Clipper coming out of the Atlantic provinces and then most likely going to scoot it northward. Big high pressure ridge there off the coast of Spain. Going to keep these rain trains heading into Ireland and the UK. I'm sure you guys haven't seen the sun in days. It all seems that way with this forecast. There is a low coming in pretty much every other day. And as well, low pressure system here coming out of Turkey. Other than that, no major weather systems through the Mediterranean, but hot, 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 hot through the forecast here, northern parts of Africa and Iraq, Iran, and as well through the Mediterranean, looking at 46 degrees Celsius, definitely heating up towards the long range forecast here, five days, looking very hot conditions, most likely some cyclonic conditions as well. Five-day forecast over Southeast Asia and West Indies. Cyclone developing in the Banda Sea. A long line of moisture heading out of China off the Mongolian mountains right out to the Pacific. And then watching this forecast, Monday to Tuesday, most likely a Category 1, Category 2 cyclone heading into the coastline there. As well, looking over the Pacific, pretty jagged and ragged, strong high pressure ridge, not really letting these systems go anywhere. Long line of moisture stretching from what the Banda Sea through China and up into almost the Aleutian Islands. So, crazy stuff, new jet streams across the northern hemisphere, and high pressure blockades that are coming from some superheated equatorial regions. And with our collapsed magnetosphere, higher elevation, cold temperatures, we're going to ex expect and see the extreme weather conditions continue and persist. And most likely, we will not see a summer this year. Strong, cold, high-pressure ridges across the northern hemisphere right now. Not much is changing here in these forecasts. Overlooking South America, big low pressure system here, gonna bring some wild weather towards the border with Brazil, Argentina, and through Bolivia and Paraguay. And as well, heavy snow through Chile. Look at the size of that low. A lot of moisture wrapped up in that thing too. No major weather changes here overlooking Africa, except for the maybe, you know, five degree temperatures here higher elevations South Africa versus your 46 degree later in the forecast. So yeah, big temperature transition across the equator. We're seeing extreme heat, but yet those cold polar pushes are still coming. Overlooking Australia, no major changes there either, except for southwestern regions, rain coming in. And parts of Auckland, northern New Zealand, watch for this system to most likely come right to your island. Look here, a five-day forecast is going to just graze you, but that could change in the long-range forecast. You guys are at higher elevation, and then is there a deep, lower-level low. I'm going to leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern. Big, vigorous lows across the southern hemisphere right now, and very cold winds and low pressure systems across the northern hemisphere as well observe them for yourself and thank you for watching today this has been mike with morning do daily events worldwide stay aware and prepared stay young and have fun and get your morning do prayers for humanity much love bye bye If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the